Well, welcome to question five from the end of chapter four on fundamentals of particle technology, which is all about um, constant pressure filtration and scaling up uh, experimental data. Um, the uh, question is reproduced here, and it's really split into, we can split it into two parts. The first part, which is down to here, is all about some um, experimental data. And the data is illustrated in this chart here. And it refers to uh, a pilot scale experiment rather than a laboratory. The uh, reason why it's pilot is that that's actually quite a high area for a laboratory filter. Um, it would be logical actually to take a reasonable size filter onto a plant, for example, and run it on a side stream and uh, get the data such as what's given here. Uh, the constant pressure is 68.5 times 10 to the 4 pascals, which is around about two thirds of uh, an atmosphere. Uh, the results are on the left. The filtrate viscosity is slightly, well, it's 50% higher than that of water. Uh, the slurry concentration was 3% by weight. Most of the time we want uh, by volume in particle tech, but this is by weight. Uh, that works actually in filtration, as we'll see in a moment. Cake concentration was 52% by weight, again by weight. Uh, again, that's actually useful to us in those units. Uh, the liquid density is the same as water, even though the viscosity is slightly higher. could easily be something just dissolved. And um, so what we have really is a limited set of data. There's only four data points, but they, at this sort of scale, though, they look pretty reliable because uh, we're actually filtering 88 litres up to 220 litres. Uh, that's and we're filtering for 60 minutes for one hour. So uh, that looks like uh, reasonable data. Uh, the first stage of analysing the data is the famous uh, T of a V plot. And for the T of a V plot, we need the cumulative filtrate volume, just here, uh, obviously converted to SI units, uh, and we need to divide the filtration time. It's what we call the T over V plot, where we have time over volume plotted against volume. And we're expecting to see a line looking something like that. Well, rather, this is quite uh, will be obviously quite a graphical um, solution. So let's go to the online questions uh, which are at uh, particle te uh, particle org UK. Uh, in fact, actually, I think we need to just cycle around a little bit because. Um, I've got to the end of it. Here we go. Here are the online. Here are the online um, questions. Then at Particle Org UK, uh, it's constant pressure. So we'll nip through to the um, the constant pressure, and it's question five, five point one. Uh, just uh, recounts exactly the same information that I've just been talking about. I'll actually expand that a little bit. I think make it a bit bit more readable. Uh, OK, and the question here in the first part is to calculate the moisture ratio. That's what it says here, calculate the moisture ratio. And the hint is to consider 100 grams of wet cake. If we consider 100 grams of wet cake and note the moisture ratio definition as mass of wet cake divided by mass of dry cake, then that would be 100 divided by 52 because we know the cake concentration is 52% on a weight by weight basis. So out of 100 kilograms of wet cake, 52 kilograms will be the solids. So as a moisture ratio, wet cake divided by dry cake, that is going to be equal to 100 over uh, 52, which is just shy of um, two. So clearly that's 1.92 for the moisture ratio. And if we check the answer is correct, that's good, good news. So we know the moisture ratio is 1.92. Um, now on the next page, scroll down a little bit. On the next page, uh, again, we've got the uh, inf information on the filtration. Uh, 
we're, the information here is confirmed that the moisture ratio is 1.92, that's correct. We're as for this thing here called little c, which is the dry cake solids per unit volume of filtrate. And we'll have the units of kilograms per meter cubed. It's pretty similar to the feed concentration, but not exactly the same. Uh, so it's important to keep it in terms of the, the dry cake solids per unit volume of filtrate. Yeah, excuse me a minute, the chair was just deciding to move down. Uh, okay, so what is the dry cake solids per unit volume of filtrate? Uh, well, the first bit is S, which is the slurry concentration, which is 3%, or 0 0.003. 0 0.03, sorry, 0 0.03, because we need it in um, mass terms rather than percentage, times by the density of the fluid, which is uh, a thousand. We were told it was a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. So that would be 30 on the top. Then we have one minus our moisture ratio we just calculated. That was 1.92. So 1.92 times by uh, 0 0.03. So all that works out to 30 divided by 1.92 uh, times by 0 0.03. The answer there is just slightly higher than 30. It, in fact, it's 31.8. So let's just check that that's right. It is good. We can get on with the, um, uh, the more interesting bit, which is doing the graph. OK. So there two, we've, we've worked out the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate. That's really the important thing from the last uh, couple of questions. That's what we need. Why do we need it? Because we're about to use this equation down here. Uh, that's the T over V, the filtration time divided by the cumulative filtrate volume. And you'll see it's a Y equals MX plus C type equation, a straight line not through the origin because we have the intercept in this term over here. So why do I say M? What's the gradient? Well, that's the uh, mu is the viscosity of the filtrate, which we've been told is uh, uh, 0 0.0015 pascal seconds. Alpha is what we're actually being asked to calculate. C we just worked out to be 31.8. Uh, the area is 0.1. So we've got area squared there, and delta P we were told was 68.5 times 10 to the uh, 4 or something pascals. So we have all that information. It's a constant pressure filtration, and this is the constant pressure filtration equation. So uh, basically if we plot this graph, the T over V versus V graph, then this will be the gradient on the graph, and this term here will be the intercept the intercept being the viscosity of the filtrate again, the filter medium resistance, that's RM, uh, the area, and again, the total filtration pressure. Okay, so uh, we're looking really at a graph where we're interested in the gradient and the intercept. From the gradient, we can work out the value of specific resistance. Uh, from the intercept, we can work out the value of RM. Okay. Let's have a go at that. And here we're now going to have to go over to uh, Excel. Right, so what we have here then are our data points. Um, filtration time in minutes, filtrate volume in litres, converted to metres cubed, because that's what we've got as the x-axis here, the filtrate volume in metres cubed, SI units. It's always a good idea to convert first and plot the graph. If you try and convert the units after plotting the graph, uh, it's very easy to get into an error with the gradient. So go straight into SI units for the graph. And here are our time over volume values. OK, um, I've got a couple of placeholders here. It's, the gradient isn't really one and the intercept isn't really one. But what we're looking for here is the gradient from the graph and the intercept from the graph. So let's use Excel's uh, trend line. Uh, add trend line, we want it to be a linear, which it says there, and we're, we're after the equation, so display the equation on the chart is what we want. Great, so that gives us 
a gradient of 71660. 71660. 71660 for the gradient and 546.83. 546.83 for the intercept. So, from our, uh, from the gradient, then we're working out that the uh, specific resistance is apparently um, 2.06 times 10 to the 10 meters per kilogram and the medium resistance is 2.5 times uh, 10 to the 10 meters to the minus 1. There are design parameters, that's what we've been asked to calculate in part 3 of the um, question. So these, these are, that's the end point of the data analysis which we get from uh, the gradient for the specific resistance and the intercept for the filter medium resistance. Um, just a quick note here, the filtration pressure is in fact 6.85 times 10 to the 5, so that's actually 6, nearly 7 times atmospheric. I, I missed the decimal point out when I was talking earlier on. The calculation was done with the right value though, because it's been popped in here um, in the spreadsheet. So there's nothing wrong with the calculation. I just made a verbal slip up a little while ago. OK, so here are our values for specific resistance and medium resistance. These are our design parameters. How do we use these design parameters? Because the question goes on to ask uh, for what would happen on a 10 meter squared filter uh, after two hours? What sort of productivity would we have from this uh, from uh, uh, this uh, material? Having done this pilot test, we've established the two most important design parameters: the specific resistance and the filter medium resistance. Now let's use that to actually predict what's going to happen in our industrial process. Okay, right. Uh, well, what we need to do is we need to pop in the new filtration area, which is 10 meters squared, which we have just there. Uh, the new filtration time that we're interested in, which is two hours or 7,200 seconds. And we need to use the equation again. That constant pressure filtration equation isn't just useful for experimental data. We've used it once already to get the value of specific resistance and filter medium resistance but we can use it again as a design equation. We have to rearrange it now because we have volume uh, twice over, V squared on the first term, V on the second term, uh, and we have a constant here of the time that we're interested in, 7,200 seconds. So we can solve the equation as um, a quadratic, solve as a quadratic equation. Here's the general formula for a quadratic equation a times v squared plus b times v plus c equals 0. Um, I know c, technically speaking, isn't a constant because time will move on, but hey, we've been told to consider 7,200 seconds. So therefore, in this instance, time is a constant because we've fixed it. Uh, all the other constants, uh, we assume, remain the same between our industrial design and the uh, experimental section that we've just considered with the exception of the area you know the area has now gone up to uh, 10 meters squared from 0.1 meters squared so clearly what we will be using then is an a of 10 rather than 0.1 in our design so we can solve this uh, looking for the positive root and we're looking for the positive root of v rather than x here is our quadratic uh, equation uh, the, the, the famous solution to our quadratic equation minus b plus for the positive root square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a where a is the um, uh, is, is on the v squared term b is on the uh, v, v term and c is the, the constant which is time in our case here. So here we have the a term 
the B term and the C term, where A is equal to all that's just here in the um, brackets before the V squared. So that's our viscosity of uh, 0.0015. The specific resistance we've just calculated, which is 2.06 times 10 to the 10 meters per kilogram. Uh, the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate, which is 31.8. Uh, the area, which is um, 10 meters squared, and the pressure, which is 6.85 times 10 to the 5 uh, pascals. Okay, so that all becomes the A term, uh, which if I double click on it, you can see uh, that's exactly what, what I've done. The, these values are uh, correctly uh, popped into the A term there. Likewise, the B term um, has got the, uh, the filtration pressure, uh, the filtrate viscosity, the medium resistance, which we worked out from the experimental data, uh, and the new filter area. Okay, and the C term, that's straightforward because that's just minus the time that we're interested in. Um, so solving it in the usual way, which is the, whoops, which is the um, minus B plus square root of 4AC divided by 2 times A, solving it in that, that usual way, gives us a filtrate volume of 31.3 meters cubed. That is the um, answer to... On a 10 meter squared filter, what would be the filtrate volume after two hours? 31.3 meters cubed is the answer to that. It doesn't make much difference, actually. If you solve the uh, equation, quadratic equation, ignoring the filter medium resistance, you still get a value of about 31.5 or 31.6 meters cubed. So the filter medium resistance isn't actually terribly important. You can solve this equation more easily if you ignore this section, which is all to do with the filter medium resistance, uh, and just go for the square root of T divided by the term A. And that will still give you something like 31. Point 531.6 meters cubed so it only has a very slight uh, difference if you take into account the filter medium it is actually fairly common to ignore the filter medium resistance in in industrial filtration dangerous to do but it is actually done quite a lot but this is the the, the complete solution it has the filter medium resistance in it okay so the next bit is the last part uh, which is what would be the cake thickness? Um, if the solid density is 2,500, what's the cake thickness on this 10 meter squared filter? And that's important because uh, you need a certain finite thickness in order to ensure that the cake is, is adequately removed. And also, mm, this is clearly a, a pressure filter because we're six times atmospheric pressure, so it can't be vacuum. Uh, and the trouble with pressure filters is that they're enclosed chambers um, and if they're enclosed chambers you need to make sure the cake thickness isn't greater than the clearance in the enclosed chamber so it is a, a relevant um, check to make sure that this will basically fit in the filter okay so how are we going to calculate the cake thickness um, we have here the solids density 2500 the liquid density we were told that the cake concentration is 52% by weight. The first thing to do is to calculate the concentration by volume, and we really need it in a volume per volume basis rather than a percentage. So it's um, just over 30% by volume, in other words, 0 0.30 and a little bit more on a volume to volume basis. So the first thing to do is to calculate the dry mass of cake, which will be C, that's the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate times by the volume of filtrate gives us the dry cake mass. So the dry cake mass is uh, about 956 uh, kilograms by simply multiplying, multiplying C times by V. The volume of filtrate being 31.3. Uh, the term little c, the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate being 31.8, I think it was, something like that. Gives us nine, 996 kilograms. Uh, the volume of solids we can get from the mass divided by the density of the solids. 
because we know that's the dry solids mass. If we divide by the density of the solids, that gives us the volume of the solids. So the volume of solids is just under 0.4 metres cubed. Um, OK, now we need to take into account the volume of the cake. That's what we need uh, our volume concentration for, because we know that uh, the volume of solids is equal to the uh, volume fraction of the cake that is solids times by the volume of cake. So that value of 0 0.30 times that value of volume of cake equals that volume of volume value of solids. Or if you like, uh, we need to just rearrange that equation to calculate what the volume of cake is. And that comes out at 1.32 meters cubed. Once we know the volume of cake, then the cake depth is simply the volume of cake, 1.32 meters cubed, divided by 10, because that was the uh, area. OK, the new filter had a 10 meter squared area, so it's simply volume of the cake divided by the area over which that volume occurs, and that gives us a value of near enough 13 centimeters. OK. So the cake depth here is, is 13 centimetres. Uh, the big question is, will that fit inside the pressure filter? Is there enough space inside the pressure filter to do that? If there isn't, then you risk gumming up all the pipe work with solids and you shouldn't run it for two hours. You should run it for less period in time. So the only thing that I haven't really talked much about is converting from cake concentration by weight, the 52% there, to by volume and that is done by uh, equation 316 in the book Fundamentals of Particle Technology. It's just really from uh, a material balance um, and the big capital C is cake concentration by volume, CW is cake concentration by weight and this is the density ratio, density of the solids which was 2500 divided by density of the liquid which was 1000. Um, if you're working in percentage terms you could actually change this to being 100 minus uh, 52 divided by 52. So you, you, you can work in fractional terms or decimal terms or you can actually still work in percentage terms but if you do that make that 100 just there. Everything else cancels out so uh, it's good. It'll give you the value of 0 0.30 if you do 1 over 1 plus uh, 100 minus 52 divided by 52 times by 2,500 divided by 1,000. That's what gives you that value just there. And that's what that equation is, uh, is calculating. OK, so that, if we go back to the um, question here, uh, if the solid density is 2,500, what would be the cake thickness in part 4? 13 centimetres. So that's 13 centimetres of filter cake and um, about just over 30 metres cubed worth of filtrate. Clearly it's possible to solve the quadratic equation just here for different time values. So it's possible to come up with a, a productivity curve, the um, volume of filtrate as a function of time. All we need to do is solve this equation again at different times uh, in order to do that. And of course we can plot a graph of the volume of filtrates uh, and also the cake depths uh, as we go along. So that would be a way of identifying how long you can run the filter before, before it uh, reaches the maximum capacity of the available uh, filter channel. Okay, thank you, goodbye.